Purely digital circuitry like a standard microcontroller or a simple square wave oscillator cannot produce a variable voltage, an analog signal. The only two options are high and low. You can plug it into a digital to analog converter, a DAC. You can use a variable resistor. There are actually chips that will take a digital signal and give a variable resistance, which becomes a variable voltage, in a divider. There's all kinds of ways, but if you have a square wave such as PWM that you can control how much of the square wave is high and low, the duty cycle, you can turn that into a variable voltage. Because, for example, the Arduino Uno that uses an Atmega microcontroller, it can read analog voltage, but it cannot put it out. Like I said, it's a digital system. The analog read works by timing. But it can put out PWM of variable duty cycle. And in one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in software programming API design, the Arduino people decided to call PWM analog out. It honestly makes me wonder if somebody on that team had temporary brain damage. But moving on, as it turns out, we can use it as analog out if we really try. One of the earlier videos I did, and still the most popular video on my channel by an order of magnitude, is filtering a square wave into a sine wave with a low-pass filter. In fact, it almost concerns me how popular that video is to this very day. But if people like it, they like it. But you take a square wave, you filter it once into a triangle wave, you filter it again into a sine wave. This is a low-pass filter. The reason you have to do it in multiple stages is because of the way that a simple capacitor plus resistor low-pass filter works. There's fancier filter systems, but basically you have your square wave and you kind of round it off a bit. So if you filter it right, you get a triangle wave, but if you keep filtering it, it never gets to be an actual sine wave. I'm drawing this poorly. I'm not a draftsman. But you only get to the triangle wave stage, and then it just gets to be a smaller and smaller one until it's gone. So you balance the amplitude loss into the second stage. But what's happening here? Why is it just diminishing? Why is it not going past the triangle wave? Because it's filtering by capacitor charging. Let me show you two things. This is a low pass filter. This is a decoupling capacitor, or whatever you want to call it. What's the difference? This is designed to pass through lower frequency signal while blocking higher frequency signal. And it does so utilizing the mechanism of capacitor charging and discharging controlled by the resistor. This is usually what you'll see across the pins of a microcontroller to make sure that noise on the power line doesn't get into the microcontroller and mess it up. They're actually the same thing because in our fantasy world, you can have no resistance, but not really. You will have less than an ohm, milli ohms, or even less in a good PCB. But essentially, this is a low pass filter too. But what you have, if you recall tau equals r times c, the charge and discharge time, you know, and five tau equals five times r times c is full charge and discharge cycle. If r is very close to zero, then tau is very close to zero and the charging and discharging happens extremely quickly, which is how this works. It handles noise into the VCC pin of the microcontroller or whatever of the chip by supplying power when it dips down and grabbing extra power when it goes up. And so it smooths it out exactly as we were. The faster, the more filtering, the more it smooths out. And that's what we wanted. So in other words, these are the same thing, just with more filtering. More filtering equals more amplitude loss and smoother signal. If you plug your PWM from your Arduino into a multimeter, just a standard one, not an oscilloscope, just a multimeter, and you turn the duty cycle up and down, it's gonna read a variable voltage because it's averaging. I don't know what mechanism it's using. It's probably just doing it in software because that would be the cheapest thing, which is why it only updates once a second or twice a second. But the low pass filter is essentially doing the same thing. If you apply a low pass filter with, you know, the right values, you're going to get a balance between responsiveness and filtering, and it's going to average your signal out based on the duty cycle. And you can look at it one of two different ways. You can look at it as the decoupling capacitor, where imagine that your square wave of 50% duty cycle, so 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts. Imagine that's actually supposed to be a 2.5 volt supply with noise. Imagine that you have a DC signal and the square wave is noise on the power line. That's what this is for. If you do this, now I don't mean literally this, I'll show you, you know, 
how to choose values and such, but conceptually the idea is this is smoothing out the variation. So the average value of the square wave, the duty cycle, how much is positive, how much is zero. The average value of the square wave is what the power supply is supposed to be, and then you've got the noise, which makes it a square wave. So you can conceptualize it that way. Or if you look at this resistor, you can think of it as a low-pass filter. If you recall your Fourier analysis, this pure sine wave might be a frequency of 1, and then you've got higher and higher frequencies, and together they make noise. But this is frequency 0. A straight line, a pure DC signal, is the lowest possible frequency. A low-pass filter, well, that's pretty doggone low, isn't it? So you could view this as a low-pass filter that passes the lowest possible signal, a DC signal. So that's the concept. We use a low-pass filter to average a PWM signal into an actual real analog voltage. As with most things involving capacitors filtering signals, you do not want to drive a load with this. This is not how you put a variable voltage across a fan. That's what amplifiers are for. So you could have a second stage where you put it through an op amp or something, at least, or maybe a voltage follower. But let me show you what's happening. I have here my oscilloscope generating a square wave. I've got it from 0 to 5 volts and 500 hertz, which is the same square wave you would get out of an Arduino Uno. A couple of the Arduino Uno pins can put out nearly a kilohertz square wave, but those pins have a few issues and they're really not recommended unless you have very high tolerance requirements. The standard is 500 hertz. I don't need any power, I'm just filtering the signal here. I've got a low-pass filter, a resistor, and a capacitor. I am using a 100k ohm variable resistor, potentiometer as a variable resistor, so I can show you what happens over the whole range. And then I've got two capacitors. One of them is 100 nanofarads, and one of them is 6.8 microfarads. So let's see what happens. First, there's my square wave. So the yellow probe is just measuring the square wave. And I've, I've zoomed it in so you can see it. Don't worry about the values. I'm just trying to show you this is the range. So that would be 0 volts and that would be 5 volts. And now I've turned on the green probe and it's measuring the same thing. It is going through the resistor, but there's no capacitor plugged in yet. So there's no filtering happening. If I put the 100 nanofarad capacitor in parallel, all of a sudden we get that. And now let me zoom in. You can see that it is a very shallow triangle, triangle wave. And it's about in the middle. This is a 50% duty cycle square wave. It's a normal square wave. If I change the resistance value, if I turn it down, you can see that it starts filtering less and less and less. Right about here is where I would have it if I wanted to use this as an actual square design filter. And then if we keep turning it down and turning it down, you can see that it's getting closer and closer to the square wave with the resistance all the way down. You know, there's a few dozen ohms on there still. You get your square wave and then as you turn the resistance up, you very, very slowly start getting a triangle wave. And notice if you can see the top left corner of the square wave, the yellow, as I turn the resistance down, it's messing with the input because voltage dividers, blah, blah, blah. But with the resistance up high, the input is unmolested and we get this nice, strong, filtered triangle wave. Now, let me change the duty cycle. So if I increase the duty cycle, you will see that the triangle wave is going up. And the spikes of the triangle, of course, are following where the up and down of the square wave are. So Above 50% duty cycle, most of the square wave is high with small bits of low. At below 50% duty cycle, most of the square wave is low with little bits of high. So if I turn the duty cycle to 100%, we get the full voltage, roughly. If I turn it down to zero, we get down to ground, roughly. So right here, there you go. This is a PWM signal being filtered by a low-pass filter set really, really high, a lot of filtering, so that basically the capacitor doesn't have a lot of time to charge or discharge. It's not getting a lot of current, so the voltage cannot vary very much between high and low, and you get a PWM signal. Now you say, this triangle wave, that's not really good. That's a lot of noise. You know, that's a lot of variability. That's not a really solid variable voltage. You're right. Let's put in the 6.8 microfarad. This is with the 6.8 microfarad capacitor. That's a nice, straight, smooth line. The resistor is the same. I just switched out the capacitor. Great. We solved the problem. Watch this. If I turn the duty cycle up, there is a delay. Do you see that? 
Let me turn it all the way down and you can see do 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 and turn it up do do and turn it up do 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 do. There's a large amount of lag before it settles. This is your trade-off. Better filtering, nice smooth variable voltage, but there's a lag. So if you are more concerned about a nice smooth variable voltage and the lag doesn't concern you. You know, this is, if I go from full to zero, so let me let it settle. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. It probably would have taken about three seconds. It was slower because I had to spend time going down, but probably about three seconds to go from complete zero to complete 100. Maybe that's fine for you. Maybe you're trying to control something with variable voltage and you put it through an amplifier and it's a light or something and it goes bright or dim and it, it gives you a nice smooth effect. Maybe that's good. Maybe having this gives you a nice smooth transition instead of doing it in software because in software you could do it by just smoothly transitioning the PWM. But if you want a smooth changing variable voltage, you could do it this way and you would just instantaneously change your PWM. And the bigger the difference, the faster it would go and then it would slow and slow and slow. So there you go. If you've ever worked with 3D modeling and computer gaming, you know of a function called smooth step. That's kind of what it does. So there's your trade-off. Here's the other trade-off. Remember how when I turned the resistor down, it basically just gave us the square wave back? Now let me turn the resistor down with the bigger capacitor. As I turn it down and down and down, see? Oh, oh, spoilers. So it's a 100K resistor, and I'm turning it up and down by 50K, so it's between 50 and 100K. And you can see there's not much variability. With the other one, if I put the other one in, 100 nanofarads and I go between 150, there is a very visible difference. But the 6.8 microfarad, as I turn it up and down between 150, there's almost no change. But if I turn it down just a little bit more, not even to zero, you can start to see the triangle wave beginning to emerge. Oh, look at how much. It's pretty. I don't want to leave it like this too long because it's probably drawing a bunch of current from my oscilloscope. But look at how much it's affecting the input because the input is not buffered. It's just going through the filter. It's kind of cool, but let me turn it back up. The larger capacitor can store more energy, which means to charge and discharge to the voltage provided, it draws more energy because once a capacitor fills up, it just stops drawing energy. And once a capacitor has drained, it stops releasing energy. A bigger one, more energy, which is also why it smooths out better with a bigger capacitor because the smoothing is dependent upon the capacitor getting a certain amount of current because the resistor, remember the Capacitor is in parallel, so the resistor determines how much current can come through. If you change the capacitance, but not the resistance, the capacitor's maximum current draw is the same. So if it's a bigger capacitor, it needs more electrons for the same voltage change. But if it's getting the same maximum number of electrons per second, then it can't do it any faster, and so it can wiggle less between, it goes high and low and high and low, so it tries to hold on to and release electrons. And if it's able to hold on to and release the same number of electrons, regardless of the capacitance, when you increase the capacitance, that number of electrons results in a smaller voltage change because there's more space in the capacitor. There you go. So you can use an Arduino to put out an analog voltage just by filtering your PWM. For a clean signal, it's going to take either multiple filter stages or a single extremely strong stage that causes a lot of latency. Your choice. Or just get a DAC. The primary use case for doing this is when you need to put out a variable voltage signal for whatever reason using just variable duty cycle PWM. And you can put out variable duty cycle PWM with a microcontroller or with some sort of variable resistor tied into something like a 555 timer. Although if you're doing that, you already have a variable resistor. So really the use case is when you have PWM out. And if that's what you need, then one resistor and one capacitor, that's not a large bill of materials. And there is another tool for your toolbox. So I will be seeing you.